For this video, we're going to take a look at BPMN activity diagrams. That BPMN is what we'll be using in this course. That stands for Business Process Modeling Notation. This has been around um, specifically widely adopted since 2004. And it's maintained by the Object Management Group. And you know, this type of modeling really is designed to be understood by business people such as yourself. Um, and it's, you know, it can be made a lot easier with software. Uh, unfortunately for this class, we don't have access to um, you know, fancy software to be able to do the BPMN activity diagrams, but we'll be able to get there just by using either PowerPoint, Word, or even um, putting the old pen, t uh, pen to the paper. So as the name suggests, this is an activity diagram. You know, big picture, what we're trying to do is capture the activity of your business uh, and show it in a picture format. Because as we've talked about, you know, writing it out in words is one thing, but some people really need that visual. And so that's what we're doing here. So to get us started, this is very important. When we're doing a BPMN activity diagram to, to show the reader that we are starting an activity, we have a circle with just a single um, normal line around it. Uh, you can also see that sometimes we'll have an intermediate event. This is where our process is stopping um, for a specific amount of time, but it's not ending. Uh, but maybe we're waiting 30 days to pay an invoice. So we would show that with a double-lined circle. Now, importantly, we also have an end event which is a circle with a bolded outline. Okay, so these are standard symbols for start, intermediate, and end that we will want to use while we are doing our BPMN uh, activity diagrams. After we've started our event, the next thing uh, in our diagram that's important are activities. So you'll notice that if we're showing an activity, we're using a rounded rectangle in our diagram. Okay, and it's also important to note that each activity, we should have a short verb phrase um, within this rounded rectangle. You know, some good examples would be maybe process credit card payment or bill customer. You know, short verb phrases that really lets our reader know this is an activity um, and, you know, a nice description of what that activity is. So we've got our start and we've got our activities. Well, it would be nice for our reader if there was some kind of indication um, where we're going. So that's why we have these sequence flow arrows. Okay, These arrows represent an indication of the progression of activity within a process. So we will also want to include these in our diagrams as we build them. Moving along, we also have what's called a gateway. Now, one thing to remember is gateways usually come in pairs. So if you're using a gateway in your diagram, you know, sometimes it's a good idea to just put two in right away. And you would use a gateway if you were uh, approaching a decision. Uh, so, you know, maybe you're doing a transaction and your customer has the opportunity to pay in either cash or credit. So a gateway would be a great tool to use in that example because um, you could put in here cash or credit. Uh, we could go off the top with if the customer brought cash. We could go off the bottom if the customer is proceeding with credit. Uh, and then again, you would process your transaction and the gateway, you'd have a second gateway that would bring us back to the process. So let's put all these pieces together and take a look at an example. So here is a great example of just a normal checkout line, maybe at your local grocery store. So let's just see how everything is flowing. We've got our single line circle letting us know we're starting the process. Here the customer presents an item to the checkout clerk. We've got our sequence flow here onto our rounded rectangle, which is signifying um, an event. So here we'll have our clerk scan items and identify the payment method. So here we've got a sequence flow onto our payment method and now we have a gateway because it could be cash or credit. Okay, so we've got some nice labels for us here. Let's go along the cash path. 
we would accept our cash as the clerk, close our gateway to come back to our normal process, uh, which is to bag the items, and then we're ending our process with a bolded lined circle. Now this is a very simple example. A lot of our examples might be a little bit more complicated than this. So let's go ahead and introduce um, the concept of pools and swim lanes. So when we're talking about pools, we're talking about a single organization. So what we just took a look at, um, you know, a grocery store would be a pool, okay? That customer coming in is not a part of that pool. The customer would be a pool of their own, okay? But if you think about a pool and, you know, if you swam in the past or you've seen swimming pools, a lot of times they'll have swim lanes. Well, we can kind of visualize the same thing within the pool. Um, you could have a separate swim lane for each department. So at a grocery store example, you know, you could have a swim lane for the uh, restocking department. Or you could have a swim lane for the clerk. Or also a swim lane um, possibly for maybe an ordering department. Um, to keep that grocery store stocked. So um, that's what we're talking about when we are talking about swim lanes. But remember, the customer, that's not part of the grocery store. The customer would be in a pool of their very own. Another thing to remember is that each pool must include a start and at least one end. So if you have two separate pools, you need a starting for each pool and an end for each pool. Uh, and the sequence flow must not break between the start and the end. And just to give you a visual here of what a pool would look like, we've got swim lane one and swim lane two. Okay, so since we're within one continuous pool, uh, we have a start and an end. If we had a separate pool, we would have another one up here with its own start and end, but we're within the same organization. Um, so this is just a visual of what these different swim lanes could look like. Another thing that's going to help us out of the, as the reader is that we could have message flows. And this um, particularly becomes useful when you're working with multiple pools, which we'll see in just a second. Uh, but the thing to remember with message flows is that they are indicated by a dashed line, okay? Um, that lets us know um, that we have a message that's flowing from one pool to another. And here is a great example of two separate pools, okay? So this is depicting a patient calling in and requesting an appointment at a doctor's office. So the patient is in their own pool, they've got their own start and end, and then we've got the doctor's office within their own pool with their own start and end, okay? So let's just follow along with this example. We've got the patient and it starts with them, you know, feeling ill. So they're gonna go and they're gonna, their action that they're taking is they're gonna request an appointment. And now we can see this message flow that says, may I have an appointment, which then starts the doctor's office process because they receive a request. Okay, that's their verb phrase. Okay, they're going to go along their sequence flow. They're going to assign an appointment to that uh, patient. They'll have a message flow back to the patient saying your appointment is scheduled at this time. That patient gets their appointment and it ends their process. And at the same time, the doctor's office process has also now ended. So notice that there was no break um, from beginning to end with our sequence flow, whether we were the patient uh, and in their pool versus we were the, in the doctor's office pool. So here's some best practices as we venture out to do our own BPMN modeling. Uh, you know, focus on one business process at a time. Um, simplicity really is the key here. You don't want to go overboard and try and encompass too many processes all at once. Um, you know, the end goal is that it's a clear visual um, that anyone in your organization can take a look at and follow from beginning to end. So that kind of drives home the second point. Clearly identify those starting and ending points in the process. 
Um, don't avoid, um, I'm sorry, don't include too much distracting detail. Again, you want to keep these simple. Um, you know, labels are great. Um, you really want to label um, your activities clearly with that verb. Um, let us know what is going on. And um, you're going to uh, go ahead, uh, get some feedback if you're doing a BPMN model. Maybe share that with somebody. Um, get a little bit of feedback. Um, maybe part of your process isn't extremely clear. Uh, some feedback would be very valuable in that situation. And you can make some slight modifications to your BPMN model. Uh, that's all we have. Thanks for joining me on BPMN Modeling.